Hey, what's up, turtles? It's Crick. You could probably guess from the title of the video. Sorry, I'm so happy right now. This is the first time wearing it out in the forest. This is uh, my handmade wool blanket anorak pullover. <laughs> I'm sorry, so happy. I don't even know where to start. I'm so, I'm so happy. I'm so proud of this project. But before I go into the details, I bought a... Uh, a wool blanket. It was a blend. Do you remember what it was? 30, 90, 10, 80, 20, something like that. Yeah. It was something like that uh, at an Army Navy store. And I bought it new, 25. I, I did the rounds of the day at the local thrift stores in the area. And we're only a wool blanket. So I was like, you know what? Let's just go to the Army Navy store. I, I know I can find a cheap blanket there. So that's what I did. And <laughs> this is what I came up with. I watched a lot of videos trying to get some ideas and um, see what other people were able to come up with. And I really didn't find too many like super helpful videos, but I watched enough to get a good idea, thought about it for weeks, watched like tutorials on making hooded cloaks, like Halloween costumes, everything I could think of because I didn't have a pattern. So I didn't want to start cutting up a blanket kind of blind. So what I did, took an old sweatshirt of mine that didn't fit, but I just compensated, added, um, added material where I thought I needed it and it kind of worked out well. And actually about three weeks ago, kind of what inspired me to start this project, because I wanted to do it for a while, but we went to the Renaissance Fair, the Pennsylvania Renaissance Fair, it's about an hour from us, and uh, kind of inspired me to start this project, because I've been wanting to make a wool blanket shirt pullover anorak for a while now, but since going to the Renaissance Fair, sort of got made fun of for a little bit for stuff I was wearing, and I wasn't even trying to dress up, it was just, you know, the hat I wear, and and my bottle sling and all that. And I got made fun of and they were calling me Kentucky Jones. These guys at like the front of the, the ticket entrance on the castle wall were like, I guess sitting there drinking or whatever. And they were sitting there yelling down and while I was in line, call me Indiana Jones's brother, Kentucky Jones. But either way, I got inspired by the Renaissance Fair. So the hood I left really big because one, it gives it that, that look of, you know, the old timey cloak or Robin Hood style. And that was definitely what I was going for with this. But also, you can see I have my, my oil cloth hat that I wear a lot in the winter. I have that on and the hood's definitely large enough to fit over that nice. So it kind of worked out well. You can see some hand sewn details here. I left some leather I put in this gusset, I guess, so I can tighten this up. It would actually draw the hood a little bit closer to my neck and pulling around me, but I don't need it today. It's overkill for sure. I'm just wearing it for the video because I was so excited to share. But I sewed the body of the pullover with the sewing machine and fought with that for a while too. But I did put some hand, um, hand sewing details. You can see the leather on here. This is a separate piece. This separate piece underneath this is, you know, a triangle that I sewed in. And I made all this myself. This is veg tan. This is thin veg tan. This was thicker that I skived down and oiled the crap out of so it would be pliable. I'm so happy with the way this turned out. The last thing I did, actually did this last night, is I put pockets on the front. Two pockets, but I wasn't super happy with the fact that if I put something in there, you know, I, I basically I needed some way to figure out how to keep these closed. And what I came up with was just a simple button slash toggle. And this is, again, thick veg tan leather that I completely saturated. And then I uh, put it in the oven for some cycles to make it nice and hard. I don't know if that's translating or not, but what I came up with was just a simple, simple toggle button design. Now it keeps that pocket much more secure than it was. And there's one on the other side as well. It's literally the same thing mirrored on this side. Little button slash toggle. And I used, you can see the thread in the middle of this and down here for this tab too. It's the wax nylon, or is it nylon? It's a wax synthetic thread that I use for all my leather projects, but worked out well here. And literally sewing this on is literally the same thing, the same technique you use for a button. I've done a video on actually sewing a button back on a pair of pants. So if you're not, if you really don't know how to do a button, you can definitely reference that video. But these pockets will work well to hold something or I can put my hands for hand warmers in them. I don't have anything in these right now, but they're definitely wide enough to fit my hands in now. And if I have gloves on as well in the winter, they should be no problem with fitting my hands and gloves in there comfortably. <laughs> I'm just so, so happy with this, the way this turned out. And there might be a couple, couple things I add to this and I'll touch on that real quick. One thing I might add to this. These sleeves are really long right now and I kept them that way on purpose for a few reasons, because you can always like do more when you have the length there. And it's not a raw length. I did, you know, sort of hem this over and, and give it a clean edge. 
but it's a little long right now. So the, one of the last things I might do with this feature wise is maybe, you can see I'll maybe just pinch that over and then just put, you know, I have a buckle here and then maybe put a strap over here just to be able to buckle that just so it's tighter to my wrist and it's not hanging over my hand. But that way if I keep it this long, I still have the ability to pull it down over my hands if it's super cold or whatever, I forgot gloves, you know, use your imagination. But besides that, I think this is pretty much finished. Put my hood up, make it a little bit easier. I don't think I've shown this in a video before. Some of you have seen it if you follow us on Facebook or Instagram. There's been pictures of this, but I don't think it's ever been in a... You think we... Have we done this, Sony? I don't think so. No, I, I know we were going to last winter. I wanted to do like a one-person kit, not really carrying a bag, but I don't know if that ever... We never did it, but either way, this is a bottle sling I made. You know, this is a 40 ounce clean canteen. It'll fit a 32 ounce analogy, anything with that diameter circumference. But I think it just completely rounds out now this kit of my classic or classic style for the forest. That's all I really want to share with my, uh, my handmade projects today. And the reason I sort of did this video now is because I know there's a lot of people who have yet to try this project and have or want to, or they're going to start doing it this uh, fall, winter. So I thought I'd put this up and show you what I did, maybe to give you some ideas, or you can ask me questions now that I've gone through it the first time and and swore and pulled out my hair and like, you know how it goes when you're uh, doing something for the first time. But so if you do have any questions or want to bounce any ideas off me, I'm more than willing, more than willing. So leave a comment. And on a side note, I probably will be going to the Renaissance Fair, PA Renaissance Fair, one more time. I think it'll be the last weekend I'll be there. I'm not sure what day. So maybe if you're around, you know that sort of thing, maybe find me walking around cloaked. So let me know what you think about, about my uh, wool blanket, anorak pullover. Yeah, this is Crick. <laughs> Later, turtles.